Hey, don't all leave because <laughs> I'm recording. Walter, you got your camera on? Yes, sir. Uh, I turned my camera off, but I am here and ready to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Walter, remind me where you're at again. So I am in Keystone Heights, Florida. Which uh, it's right. just a little small town about a half an hour east of Gainesville. Awesome. Awesome. So, so normally we have our instructors in person in here, so we're all on Zoom, but we like to get together in person. So we got some people here in the office. Um, but I met Walter online. Originally, Walter was going to do a safety and a risk management class for us, because some of you might remember the uh, discussion panel we did with moms recently. Um, it, there was a conversation in, in that panel discussion about safety, you know, not just for women, but for real estate agents in general. And um, Walter spent 21 years in the Navy, knows a little bit about uh, taking care of yourself. And uh, so normally in Florida, he does um, a longer version of that training. And we were just going to get the instruction. Of course, we couldn't do the hands-on portion. And so I felt like the instruction was going to be very relative to us just doing that panel discussion. But then Walter being a coach and uh, being a successful investor and real estate agent, and I didn't even realize when I met him that he's actually with EXP oh, okay. out, in, out in Florida. So it's awesome. This is part of the family. Didn't even know. <laughs> um, so in proceeding towards this event, being that it's the first week in January, he brought up the fact that, hey, I got a pretty good uh, pro, uh, time management, plan, business planning, very relevant for the first of the year. So we switched topics. So that's kind of the evolution of how that happened. Um, I'm just getting to know Walter as well. So Walter, I'm gonna let you introduce yourself and uh, add anything that you want and then just rip right in, into your presentation. And guys, if you have any questions, Walter, if this is okay with you, unmute your mic, speak up, ask him questions. Let's make this interactive if we can. Otherwise you can put it in the chat or um, you know save it till the last and we'll do some Q and A at the end. But Walter, it's all yours. Awesome. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, feel free to chime in or if, if you want to drop something in the chat, we'll, we'll do a Q&A session at the end. Uh, I always like to put a slide together just for Q&A. So feel free to drop them in the chat and then we can use that to make sure we answer every question. So a little snippet about me, right? Obviously the basic stuff, top producing agent. I spent a lot of time in central Virginia where I was top in my office, top 3% in my MLS region, you know, just having fun, doing great business. I'm a 21-year Navy veteran before that. I'm an active real estate investor. I've been buying and selling literally since I joined the Navy. So every time the military would move me, I'd buy a new primary residence and I would either flip or rent the previous primary residence. So it was really great for me to be able to build up a real estate empire. Uh, you know, I bought some stuff, sold some stuff. I currently own five properties in three different states, remodeling a lake house right now in Central Virginia or in Central Florida. And realistically, we'll probably only live in that for a few years and we'll turn it into an Airbnb. We'll buy something bigger. Uh, but So that's a whole lot of fun. Former marathon runner as well. And father of three kiddos, six dogs, and a cat who thinks she's a dog. Now, why is that relevant? So everything that's on the slide, while it may not seem relevant to real estate, every single one of these requires a level of discipline and time management to do well. And so that's the point. You will hear me reference uh, a military analogy and probably a marathon analogy as we go through the training. And so I like to just highlight those points so that you understand that. All right, so we're going to dive right on into this. These are the topics I'm going to cover. I'm not going to read this slide for you verbatim because I'm not going to insult anybody's intelligence. The most important thing you should take from this slide is Albert Einstein was a genius and he thinks I'm cool, so you should too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the first thing you got to do when you're doing time management, everybody wants to say, well, let me time block. Well, what are you time blocking? And so time management, if you're going to do it well, you really need to put the goal planning on the front end of that time management. And so many people out there, and I'm sure most of you did it, I, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of agents will do this, as the year is winding down, They'll, they'll look at what they did, and then they'll say, well, my 2022 goal, because of what I did in 2021, is X. While that's better than nothing, I always teach that you should plan for the destination, not the departure. 
And so what I mean by that is if, if you're using a traveling analogy, right, I'm in Central Florida. When I drive from Central Virginia, it's 50 degrees outside in the morning when I leave, but I'm already wearing my Hawaiian shirt, right? Because I'm planning for Central Florida where it's 80 degrees. In business, you should plan for where you want to be, not where you were. And so that long-term strategic vision really helps to make goals that will help your business move forward. Yes, you can set any goal you want and probably hit it. But if you really want to move your business forward, set some crazy audacious goals. And the way that I teach agents to do that is cast a vision in your mind of what your business looks like three to five years from now. Where do you want it to be? How successful are you? How much money are you making? What does it look like in your mind, the ideal business five years ahead of now? And make your goal planning based on that. And what I mean by that is how much activity would you need to be doing to support a level of business that you want to have three to five years in the future? Start planning that level of activity into your calendar now, and you will get to that destination a whole lot faster. Uh, the other thing I tell people is if you're going to plan a goal, if you write down the goal and immediately in your mind you go, yeah, yeah, I can do that. No problem. The goal is not big enough. Right. If you write down a goal and the first thing that comes to your mind is, well, yeah, I think I can do that. It's still not big enough. Right. Make a goal that literally makes you initially question whether you can achieve it or not. That's the kind of goal you want to set, because. If you set that goal and miss it, you still had a rock star year. If you make a goal that you know you can easily achieve, yes, you'll probably hit that softball, but how much great business did you cheat yourself out of by setting your goal too small? So that's the first thing you're going to want to do is really give some thought to how big do I want to be and let's start planning based on that. Then you can take that and you can break it down into an annual goal, right? We all like to use a yearly metric because it's just an easy thing to do. So if I know I want my business to be at X, by the end of this year, I want to do 30 deals, 50 deals, 100 deals, whatever that looks like for you. Then we're going to take those yearly goals and you're actually going to break that 12-month period down into individual monthly milestones. And what this is, is a simple checkpoint so that you can know if you're on track or if you need to make adjustments on the fly to stay on track. And, and it looks really simple. I'll use an analogy. Um, I'll walk through this in real time when we get to the Q&A slide to kind of bring this all together. But your monthly milestone is gonna be a basic checkpoint. So at the beginning of the month, you look back on the previous month and say, did I do what I wanted to do to stay on track for my yearly? Am I still on track? If you're not, one of two things has to happen. You either need to plan more activity that builds your business, or you need to learn where you can be more efficient in that same activity so that you boost your ROI on your time and get where you want to go. So you have to make those adjustments on the fly, and the monthly milestone really helps keep you on track. From there, we're going to break it all the way down into daily action items. What are the specific tasks that I know I need to do in order to get my business where I want it to be in the future. And so again, to use that military analogy I mentioned, in the military, we never want the enemy to get our gear, our weapon systems, our comms, because if they have a finished product, they can break that finished product down all the way to its individual components. And then they can reverse engineer the weapon system or the communication system or the whatever piece of equipment it is. And then they can use it against us because we've given them the finished product that they can break down to recreate more finished products. This process does that for you in your business. It reverse engineers the success that you want to have into the individual components that get you there. And it starts to create this forward momentum to where you're like, wow, if I'm just doing these things, I am actually seeing the fruits of my labor and I can see where I'm going to get. 
Um, so that's that long-term big picture has to be the first thing you really put your mind to. After you've got that, we're gonna have a meeting with yourself. Now, this is what I want everyone to do right now, whether you're in the office, whether you're on the Zoom, I do this to everybody, so I promise I'm not picking on you specifically. Pull out your calendar right now. Grab your phone, uh, unless you're Zooming on your phone and that might be difficult, but pull up your calendar, whether it's Outlook, it's Gmail, it's whatever you're using, and flip your calendar to this Sunday evening. So everyone's on this Sunday evening. I want you to pick a time that works for you, usually sometime after dinner, but before bedtime is ideal because the week is over, right? It's Sunday night. It's quiet. Nothing is really happening. Maybe the family's off watching Netflix in the living room, and it's just, it's an easy time to steal away 30 minutes to think. And then I want you to put an item on your calendar, 30 minutes meeting with yourself. You can call it a meeting with yourself. You can call it time blocking next week, right? Whatever you want to call it is fine. But pick that time that you know it'll be quiet and block 30 minutes to sit down and plan. Then I want you to set that to repeat every single Sunday at the same time. And I want you to set a reminder a little bit ahead of that meeting so you can properly prepare for it before you start it. The last thing I want you to do is in your mind right this second, Think about where you're going to be able to hold this meeting that is a nice, quiet location where it's just you, there's no distractions, right? So maybe that's your dining room table because everyone else is in the living room watching TV and you can squirrel away to the dining room and it's quiet. If you've got three kids and six dogs, it might be the master bathroom because that's the only spot in the house where it's not hectic. I've even told agents that if you have to go out into your car, and sit in your car for 30 minutes because it's a sound booth and it's just you. Wherever that place is for you, lock it into your mind now and hit save on that calendar invite. Okay, congratulations. If you did that, you, are, you have completed step one into building out your entire year that we're gonna walk through for the rest of this. I realize it's not Sunday yet, so if you wanna practice this after we're done and do it this evening, get a little bit of a trial run for the rest of the week, that's fine. But every Sunday, you're going to plan out the, the next week in advance so that you have successes built into your calendar. And we'll talk about how that looks. Okay. This is Walt Key's way of doing it. You absolutely can do it a different way if you would like. And Walt Key's way is not the only way. This tends to work very well for most people, and it puts first things first. So on that Sunday evening, when you're planning out your entire week, right? Monday morning through Saturday evening, think about these three priority levels and put them on the calendar in this order. So priority number one, these are your can't miss items. What I mean by that is you absolutely have to be there, but you do not get to control the timing of that thing. Right, so that's a doctor's appointment, dentist appointment, your kiddo has a soccer match, your daughter has a ballet recital, you're taking your wife out to dinner, right? Whatever that is for you and your family dynamic, those things are the number one priority. If your family is not aligned, your business will not do well. So plug those in first before you actually start plugging in your business activities. Because again, you can't move those time frames, and the last thing you want to do is wreck your family dynamic by missing something. So those go on first. Once you've got those prioritized out for the week, right? Sally's got this thing over here, and little Johnny's got this thing there. Now you know what time you have free to start putting in those business building activities onto the calendar. And we're talking day by day, hour for hour, we're going to block out these items. So some things that are priority number two. These are the must do items. These are the things that you have determined on Sunday evening. I have to do these things in order to move my business to where I want it to be. So that can be active prospecting, networking in your market, building new relationships with either clients or vendors or lenders, you name it. If there are listing appointments, obviously those are high priority. If there are buyer consultations, high priority. 
you'll notice that follow up is on here. That's absolutely business building activity to follow up properly with your clients because they will gauge your communication and follow up when they're ready to write that five star review. So that's wildly important. I actually have three different follow up times on my calendar. I have a morning, an afternoon, and an evening. So that even if I can't get to everything throughout the day, I have three dedicated times where I'm always going to be able to communicate before the day is over. Um, if there are other things that you decide you need in your business building activity, this is the place to put on your calendar. Now, the last thing is going to be whatever else you might want to do, right? You've already planned out your family life. You've already planned out your business successes for the week. If you want to go fly fishing because you've got a gap on Friday afternoon, hey, put it on your calendar. Just go fly fishing. Now, you might say, well, why do I need that stuff on my calendar if it's just whatever I want to do? Well, here's the reality of this business, and most of you probably already know this. If there's a gap in your calendar that's not accounted for, you will very easily fill that gap be at a client's whim, and you didn't really want to, but you didn't have it blocked out already, and so it got budgeted. So if there's something that you really want to do, and there's a time frame you can assign to it, put, put that on your calendar as an appointment so that it protects your time and it doesn't allow anything to step over the things that are important to you. So we just did uh, this Tuesday, actually, our training was on mental health and you know anxiety and panic attacks and how to roll through the emotions of a hectic real estate life. Planning out the things that are important to you to allow you to recover and recuperate are wildly important to the success of your business. And that's why we want those on the calendar as well. Okay. Now, before I dive into the nuts and bolts of how to block this out on your calendar, I just always like to take a second to talk about technology. Uh, regardless of how old you are in the business, whether you're 20 or 80, technology is your friend. You should be using it to leverage your time back. And so a couple quick examples of how you can do this to automate your, your follow-up systems, your calendar management, and get more of your time available. The follow-up systems are huge, right? We all know we need to follow up with our clients. We need to stay top of mind. We need to have touch points throughout the year. That is incredibly difficult to do in an individual one-on-one -on -one basis, especially as you grow your business and your database is hundreds of people. And so automating something like a weekly newsletter or a text campaign, which will send out a bi-weekly text to all of your database from you, really start to make you communicate well and follow up without having to spend hours communicating and following up. So look at those systems out there that you can use to automate the process. So for a newsletter, for example, right? MailChimp is great because it's free and it automates with your social media constant contact isn't free, but it's a great system. And a newsletter takes about 20 minutes a week to prep. And then your entire database gets a touch point from you 52 times a year. That's a good way to leverage technology. There are some really great tech campaign companies out there for you know, $25, $30 a month. You can set up in advance an entire month's worth of texts and you just hit go. And everyone that's in your database will get that text from you It's on autopilot. Now you've freed up all of your time to go do the business building activities. Calendar management is another big one. So again, I always recommend if you can use an electronic calendar, Outlook, Gmail, whatever. And the reason is if I'm on the phone with a client and let's say I'm old school and I like my day planner, but I'm on the phone and I'm not in front of my day planner, and the client says, hey, listen, I'd really like to do that at Thursday at two. Does that work for you? And I kind of mentally roll through my calendar in my mind of what I can remember. And it feels right. So I'm like, yeah, Thursday at two. I think that's good. Let's plan for that. Now, 20 minutes goes by. I get to my day planner. I'm going to write this down. And oh, what do you know? I've got a 130 that's going to take an hour on Thursday. I can't do two o'clock on Thursday. So now I have to spend my time calling that client back saying, hey, I'm sorry, I'm a knucklehead. I overbooked myself. Can we shift to something else? If I had my Gmail calendar, I could literally, while I'm on the phone with this client, say, hold on one second and let me confirm that. I pull up my calendar on my phone that I'm holding in my hand and I say, hey, listen, I can't do two o'clock on Thursday. 
but I can do three or four, which of those is best for you? Boom, now I'm not double booked. I don't have to go back and cancel on somebody. I don't have to waste any more time to get that happening. The other thing you can do is you can use a calendar app like Calendly, which has a completely free version and it will sync with the electronic calendar. So as long as you have done a really good job of budgeting out your week in advance, you can give the link to your client and say, hey, listen, I'm available. You book whatever's best for you. Here's my calendar link. Just book what works for you. And when they open that link, they'll only see the times that you are available. But it feels like you're being incredibly available to your client because you told them to pick the time. But really, you're just giving them your availability in one snapshot that they choose from. So that technology can really make your life a lot easier when you start talking about calendar management and booking appointments with other people. And then obviously setting the reminders in advance. I always like, if I'm going to any sort of showing, any sort of meeting that I have to leave my house for, I set a one hour reminder. If I'm just hopping online for something and it's gonna be quick, you can do a 15 or 30 minute reminder. Uh, but always set a reminder of some kind so that you don't overlook something while you're not looking at your calendar. Okay, conferences versus in person. These are getting really, really popular now. Like, obviously, we're on a Zoom call right this second. I've been on so many Zoom calls in the last week doing everything else. I don't know how I'd function without them. But here's something that a lot of people don't think about. For example, let's say you've got a new buyer and you need to review the buyer representation agreement with them. Well, they're 20 minutes away from you. Now, you could drive 20 minutes to their house have a conversation about the agreement, walk them through it, have them sign it and drive 20 minutes back. It's gonna be the same conversation, which will take the same amount of time to have, but you spent 40 minutes driving and you wasted your gas. Why couldn't you hop on a Zoom call with that client, do a screen share, walk them through the exact same contract, the exact same conversation, and then email it to them to electronically sign afterwards. You spent the same amount of time and energy on the conversation. You just saved 40 minutes of your day to put towards something else. And so think about those kind of things. What could I do on a Zoom call instead of doing in person to allow me to buy more of my time back? And anybody can have a Zoom. It's completely free, right? You don't have to host big webinars. You can hop on a one-on-one -on -one Zoom with absolutely anybody. I would highly recommend you have a Zoom for you to do those things with. And again, all we're doing is we're implementing technologies that leverage our time back so that we can put that time towards better use activities that build our business, right? We all get 24 hours in a day. I am working diligently to create a 25th hour. I haven't quite got it broken down yet. As soon as I do, I'll share it with everybody at EXP. Until then, we all get 24, so we simply have to use our time better. Okay, moving right along. Once you know what you want to do and how you want to do it, you have to protect your calendar. This is vital to your success. So we already identified the priorities, right? We're going to sit down. We're going to think out our goal. What's our long-term vision? What's our yearly goals that we want to hit? Breaking that year into month milestones. I want to do this much every month to know I'm on track or I have to adjust. If I'm going to accomplish this much in a month, what kind of daily activity do I need to do every single week in order to get there? We've already identified that ahead of time. Now, this is where you're going to plug this in to your calendar, line for line, day for day, hour by hour, to hold yourself accountable to the success you already agreed you want to have. Now, a couple high points on the slide. In order to time block efficiently, you need to have a minimum of 30 minute blocks. And the reason I say this is because this has actually been studied over and over for decades. The brain takes several minutes to transfer properly from one primary task to another. So if you've got a bunch of little five, 10, 15 minute things on your calendar, none of those will get done efficiently because your brain is hopping from one to the other. Do not try to multitask. Do not ever put two things on the calendar at the same time. This, the bullets that you see on the slide, these are not Walt Key's opinions. These are actual studies 
from medical professionals studying the neuroscience behind multitasking. When you try to multitask, you are three times more prone to errors, 40% less efficient at the task. And if you are, this is a male study. So this last bullet was actual men being studied while multitasking and while focusing on one primary task at a time. And what the doctors and scientists discovered was that your IQ actually drops to that of an eight-year-old when you try to multitask at a time. It's just not a good way to do business. So plan your priorities properly, one priority at a time, and never put two things on the calendar at once. That will free up your time to be incredibly efficient. And here's the thing. When I tell people to do this, you can look at my calendar. This is a random Wednesday on my calendar. From 5 a.m. to about 7, short of that dinner block, I'm fairly busy. I like it that way. I like to stay busy. And some people will say, well, you have to be available to your clients all the time, 24-7. That is not correct. And if you are the agent that feels like you need to be available to your client 24-7, answer that text immediately. As soon as they call you, answer the phone. I challenge you to call your doctor or your dentist this afternoon and tell them that you would like to see, you know, because the receptionist, the receptionist is going to answer the phone. Tell them you want to see your doctor two hours. When they're done laughing at you, they will give you the doctor's availability and you will choose an appointment based on that. That is how professionals manage their time to be productive. Now, I'm not saying don't get back to your clients in a timely manner, right? You'll see on my calendar, morning follow-up, afternoon follow-up, evening follow-up. And of course, you can follow up in between tasks if you have time. Budget the follow-up, but understand that a couple hours from your client texting you to you responding is absolutely okay. And your clients do not expect, or at least they shouldn't expect, that you are available at their whim 24-7. That is not realistic, and it is not efficient for your business. So don't be concerned about blocking your calendar out with lots of activities that keep you productive. Just budget in those follow-up mechanisms to keep you on task. Now, the other thing to consider here is, let's say I have a task that I know is only going to take me 15 or 20 minutes, but I'm going to block 30 minutes so that the next task I can dive into fully before I start it. It's okay to grab the phone and shoot a couple text messages out for five minutes in between those tasks because those are not super brain intensive tasks. So you'll have plenty of time to follow up with your clients throughout the day. Just know that it's good to budget out everything you want to accomplish in advance and your clients will absolutely understand if you're not available for an hour because you're in the middle of something. They don't need to know what you're in the middle of. They just need to know that you're in the middle of something on the calendar or you get back to them in an hour and they don't even think twice about it. Okay. Last thing I'm going to talk about, then I'm going to open this up to a Q&A and I'm going to give you a real world example of how to break this all down. Motivation versus discipline. When I was in the military, I was also training to run marathons. I know I'm a weird, sick guy. I like to run a lot. In order to not get kicked out of the Navy, I had to show up on time for work. I don't get to choose the time. The Navy says that thou shalt arrive and you arrive. So for me to train for a marathon, there were days in Nebraska where I was stationed at the time that I had to wake up in the 3 to 3.30 hour to do my training runs before going to work on time for the Navy. Now, I could watch a movie about Usain Bolt and how amazingly fast he is, and I would be motivated to go run. But at 3.30 in the morning, when it's negative 30 degree wind chill in the winter of Nebraska, there is no motivation. It's discipline or it doesn't happen. And so it's very important to understand the difference. Motivation is very fickle, right? You might get motivated by this conversation about planning out your year and, and crushing it, but if you don't have the discipline to block that time every Sunday and plan out your week, that motivation will quickly fade and you will not succeed. Discipline will build habits. And it takes about three weeks to start getting comfortable in a habit. And once you've built the habits, 
those habits are what are going to build the winning execution of whatever it is you're trying to do. So whether it's running a marathon or whether it's hitting new goals in your business, you have to take a disciplined, structured approach in order to do what you want to do. So don't let motivation get in your way because motivation is the sauce. Be disciplined in your approach even when it sucks. All right. Let me jump into this quick analogy real quick. I'm actually, this is a same thing I used the last training. You may tweak this based on your personal goals in your business or your median sales price in your market, but I'm going to give you an example of how you can break this whole thing down into action items. So again, big picture. What do I want to accomplish for the end of the year? Let's say for a random example, you want to do $240,000 in gross commission income in 2022. Why do I say 240? Well, quarter million sounds cooler, but that's actually rough math. So I'm going to do 240 because it's easier math, okay? In order to do $240,000 in gross commission income, I need to do about $20,000 a month. That's an easy monthly milestone for me to say, did I close 20,000? Do I have 20,000 under contract? If not, I got to do more or I got to get more efficient with what I'm doing. So that's kind of what this looks like. 8 million in closed volume with a 3% commission will get you to 240 GCI. Now, if you're in a market where the median sales price is $300,000, and again, your market might be different. I haven't looked at you all to see specifically. If you're doing a $300,000 median sales price and you wanted to hit about 8 million in closed volume, you would need to close 26.6 of transactions. Let's just round that up and call it 27 transactions for the year to $240,000 in GCI. That's rough math. Yours might flex a little bit. So that sounds like a lot. How do I close 27 deals a year? Well, first of all, let's take that down into our month mile check. 27 divided by 12 is two and a quarter. Okay, well, we don't really do quarter transactions unless we're doing a referral fee. So let's say every month, you need to close two to three transactions. That doesn't sound so hard as opposed to 27 transactions a year, two to three a month sounds a whole lot easier. Now, how do we do two to three a month? This is where you have to break it down for your own individual business because there's so many different strategies for prospecting, for building your business, lead generation, et cetera. So I'm gonna throw out some random examples. In Double Income Coaching, where I teach, there's a bunch of different strategies that we teach. They're all top producing agents. They just teach what they do, and so it works really well. If you were to actively prospect Facebook groups and do it properly to generate business from the people who already need an agent or a lender or, or whatever it might be that indicates they're about to move, you could probably do two deals a month very easily, budgeting about an hour a day, three days a week. So that's three hours a week to do two deals a month on actively prospecting Facebook groups. If you were going to make some calls and you wanted to call for sell by owners and say, hey, listen, I got lots of buyers, but there's no damn inventory. Would you be open to me bringing you a buyer? Can we have that conversation? If you were doing that right with a proper script, you were calling about three hours a week, you could probably close two deals a month, either listing FISBOs or bringing buyers to FISBOs that because I built an entire business doing work with FISBOs and that's pretty easy to do if you put in the time. If you wanted to call landlords that had their properties currently on the market for rent and have a conversation with them about all the buyers you have and listen man I get that your house isn't on the market right now but I'm a landlord too and I understand that yours is up for rent so you're probably paying a second mortgage right now and you're wondering if you're going to get that crap had three years ago, you're wondering how much equity you might have, maybe it's time to put that money to other use. I'd love to have a conversation with you if you're open to it about potentially selling your house to one of my buyers if I could bring you the right price. We just have that conversation. Awesome. Now you either bring a buyer and you look like a rock star, by the way, when you do this for your buyers anyway, you should be doing it just for your buyers. Or maybe it's not right for your buyers, but you've established a relationship. And now you talk a little bit more about getting them on the market because hey, I've already, you've already agreed to sell it. It didn't fit my buyers, but I'd love to put this in front of all the buyers because I'm only one agent out of 5,000 and they all got their own buyers. You already agree that if we brought you the right price, it'd be worth selling. Could we expand this a little bit and get you on the market? 
right? Three hours a week of having those conversations with landlords, you could probably easily do two deals a month from landlords, depending on how many landlords are in your market. Those are just three quick examples. Your retirement community, you could call your local CPAs and estate planners and small business owners and build professional networks that are mutually beneficial to do referral business back and forth. If you're an Instagram, a YouTube, a TikTok guy, I know a guy that does six figures every three months on TikTok videos. I hate that kid. He's phenomenal. Um, whatever it is you're going to do to build your business, by actively budgeting the time on your calendar to do those things, you can very easily do business. So the analogy I just gave, two deals a month from Facebook groups, two deals a month from Fizbo's, two deals a month from landlords. That's six deals a month on nine hours a week of work. If you do it half as good as you should, that's still three deals a month and you're going to hit your goals. That doesn't account for the follow-up of your database, not accounting for some time spent building your database with other, other prospecting, right? There's so much other stuff you could do. Whatever systems you think you want to use to do business, budgeting it out in advance on your calendar will make you more efficient and will hold you accountable to the activity, and you will very easily be able to do that level of business. Now, again, that's just a random example based on someone that wants to do about a quarter million in GCI and their sales price is 300,000. You can tweak those numbers all you like for your market, for your median sales price, for your dynamic. What you'll do, even though you've got a monthly milestone, is you can also gauge this on the weekly activity, right? If you say, I think if I put two hours into this, two hours into that, two hours into this other thing, I'll get where I want to be. And the week goes by and you just don't feel like you made much progress. Maybe you need three hours of each of those instead of two. Or maybe the month comes to an end and you're like, holy crap, I've got five deals under contract already. I don't need to do as much. Do I want to free up some of my time or do I want to just keep on crushing it, right? You can flex this as you go because you're building in those monthly milestones and you know the points you need to hit to get you where you want to be. All right, so that is it in a nutshell. That's only about 35, 40 minutes. That was great. I'm going to pull up the chat box and feel free to unmute and ask any questions you might have. I see the chat box is currently empty. So throw me some questions. Just unmute yourself, guys, on Zoom. So, um, what if we're new at doing some of those first and we can be successful? Mm -hmm. <laughs> can you say that one more time? It was a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if everyone else heard it like the way it was, it might have just been me, but. Um, I just said that what if you're new at each one of those strategies? How can we find scripts that fit our personalities so that we can be successful at it? Gotcha, great, great question. So I always tell people, I, I use this term that I just walk keys rambling that I came up with it, right? It's prospecting for your personality type. And all that means is, like, I'm a, I'm a cold call kind of guy. Now, I don't cold call. I hate the word cold call. But I'll call people all day long. I teach a conversations course. And in that course, I teach eight different conversations that you should have as an agent if you want to build your business. Some of those are really easy conversations, right? Past clients, catching back up with them. Some of those are sphere of influence and you're staying in touch. Other ones start to get a little more complex, right? Going out into your market, building professional networks, calling the FISBOs, calling the landlords. Not everybody loves to be on the phone with people though even though i personally think it's one of the best ways to do business because the conversation builds the relationships so you first thing you want to do is figure out what kind of things match your personality right don't force a prospecting type and, and here's an ex here's a quick analogy we have a coach at double income coaching it's christian martuzzo super cool guy he did one hundred and twenty thousand dollars in 90 days from tiktok videos now, I've done his training. It's phenomenal. Anybody who wants to be a TikTok or an Instagram star will show you how. But I know that I'm not a TikTok guy, right? My ugly mug, wearing a Hawaiian shirt all day, it just doesn't work for that demographic of TikTok videos. So I don't do it, even though I know it's an effective strategy. 
I do other things that are just as effective, but they align better with my personality. And therefore, I'm willing to do them more and I enjoy it more. And that makes a conversation or a relationship or prospecting type happen easier. Um, for the specific scripts and strategies, um, let me do this. I'm going to pop my email in the chat box. Shoot me a note because it's a little difficult to walk through everything on a Zoom call. But if there's something specific you want to talk about or a strategy that you want to try, if you're thinking about any one thing, shoot me a note and let's talk more. We'll get you linked into the right training because there's a lot. So the, for example, the listings from landlords that I briefly mentioned, that's an hour long training that one of our coaches, Shane Both teaches. I built a script around it and I, I have in a free PDF. I'm happy to send it to you. It's, it's pretty good. But his training is an hour long because he really dives into it. Our TikTok and Instagram coach is an hour long training on how to do that well. My quality conversations course is an hour long because I'm talking about different conversations, different scripts, et cetera. Um, I'm happy to send anybody who wants it. I have a very simple PDF. I was going to call it Walt Keys Real Estate Ramblings. I didn't sound this professional. So I changed the name to Real Estate Agent Success Map. It's a 17 page PDF. It talks a little bit about my business philosophy, how I approach it with relationship focus. And all of the little bit of YouTube, a little bit of social, just some basic stuff that you can do. But the big piece for me is having those conversations. And I give you the scripts for past clients, for sphere of influence, for landlords, for geo leads, for Fizzos. Uh, all of those scripts that you can follow as a framework are in that PDF. Happy to send that to you for free. Um, just let me know. Hopefully that answered your question. I know it's a little long-winded answer. We can tell that Thank you're that work. Sorry, we can tell that you are a coach. So how much do you charge for your coaching sessions? Oh, I love that question. How much would you how much does Tom Ferry charge? Does anyone know? I, I'm not picking on Tom Ferry, although I don't technically like the guy because he's never done real estate well. Does anyone want to know how much Tom Ferry's elite coaching program costs? Anybody? Tom Ferry's elite coaching program. Do you know how much it costs? I do. It's thirteen hundred dollars a month. It's thirteen hundred dollars a month for his his elite program, which is four thirty minute coaching sessions. What we do is a hundred percent free forever, all the time for any agent at any brokerage. Every single Tuesday, we do a free live webinar, an hour-long webinar, so it's already twice as much as Tom Perry's doing, and we do it for zero dollars. So anyone, again, anyone who wants to jump in on this training, you are more than welcome to. Shoot me a note. I'll send you a sign-up link. It takes about 15 seconds. All we're asking for is name, phone number, email, and your brokerage so that we know how to automate the follow-up and send you the links to the webinars. Uh, every webinar has its own unique link because we're using a system called Webinar Jam. We have 4,000 agents in the program, so it's, it's too big for Zoom. And so we send out the link, and then afterwards we send out a quick replay link that's good for about 48 hours um, because they have to reset the links for the next training. But anyone's welcome to join. It's completely free. Every single Tuesday we're teaching something. Last Tuesday was about mental health and how to uh, get over the anxiety and the stress of a hectic real estate life, which actually is a little bit different because we're usually teaching business building strategies. That was just wildly important. If you've ever looked at the statistics on the suicide rates and, and jobs, real estate a lot of times is in the top 10, which is really sad. Um, so we talked a little bit about that. But usually we're talking about absolutely free strategies that you can employ in your business. It costs you nothing to implement the strategy. It costs you nothing to learn it from us. We're just out here trying to help the, the industry do better. Does that, make, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. You are very welcome. Hey, Walter, what time of day do you do those Tuesday trainings? The Tuesday trainings happen at 11 a.m. Eastern time every Tuesday. And again, it's, I, I, we realize that sometimes at 11 a.m. people are busy. If you can't make the training, go ahead and sign up because the replay link, which comes out usually a couple hours after, it'll be good for 48 hours. So if 11 a.m. doesn't work for you, but 7 p.m. that night, you, you've got some downtime, you can watch the replay link and still get the content for free at 7 p.m. Live at 11 a.m. Eastern.
What else? You guys are a quiet crowd. What else you got? Let me ask you this, and you guys can drop this in the chat if you want, or you can chime in. How many people have a goal for 2022 that's smaller than a quarter million dollars in GCI? I use that quarter million analogy, but how many are actually not wanting to do that much? How many are like, I just want to break six figures, or maybe I'm just trying to do 75 grand and pay the bills? Like, whatever your goal is, this still works for you. So quiet. You guys are the quietest crowd I've had in a long time. No hecklers <laughs> or nothing. We're thinkers, Walt. We're no, thinkers. Well, you know, you know what I think it is too? Like we've got, in hindsight, it's not you. that We got 15 people on Zoom and I'm not sure how many are in the room. We averaged a couple hundred, maybe up to 400 people per training on Tuesday. Um, maybe I'm just used to seeing the chat box blow up because we've got 400 people in it. But that's fair. <laughs> And you're well, all ESP, so you're automatically smarter than everybody else. <laughs> you're, probably, you're probably pondering a lot more. I got a question, Walt. Um, so I've, I've been in real estate a long time, and one of the biggest challenges I've had through the years is I get really busy, and you know, I have maybe working with five, six, seven clients at one time, and my priorities of can't miss, must, you know, must do, and want to do. I start cutting into all of those to handle what the business I'm doing. And then a month or two later that the pipeline changes completely because I wasn't doing some of those must, must do's to generate yeah. and follow up. Um, when you or your, you know, your coaching students get to that point when they're really busy, what kind of time management do you do they or do you set aside that you say I no matter how busy I get and how hectic it is I have to spend this amount of time each day to make sure that my pipeline is good 60 90 days from now yeah no, that's a wonderful question so I think so many people ride that roller coaster of you know generate the sale service the sale now generate the sale now service the sale and then get into that cycle of busy, dead, busy, dead. So you, yeah, that's, that's very valid. What I tell people is when you do this time management, when you block out your calendar, when you identified ahead of time, the daily activities that you need to reach your goals, protect your time by putting it on the calendar, right? So for example, very rarely, unless there's just an exception to like, a client needs to do a listing appointment and it's they are only available at 9 a.m. on Wednesday because they're just they're a nurse who work the night shift. It's all they got. Right. Short of uh, like a real example like that. I don't do listing appointments until after lunch because I'm actively prospecting in the morning. And I'm OK with telling my client, listen, I'm available Monday through Friday, two to four all day this week, what you tell me what day is best for you. And nine times out of 10, the client is going to say, how about three o'clock on this day? Perfect. That works for my schedule. It doesn't impact my, my other stuff. So it really does. And it sounds, it almost sounds counterproductive, but it's not. Sometimes you have to tell your client, I can't do it then, but I can do it now in order to protect your time to continue to do the business building activities. So if you, for example, if you're going to prospect by calling people, right, nine to noon is an ideal time to make calls. If you can only squeak in nine to 10 or nine to 1030, because you're just swamped and you've got an 11 o'clock coming up, well, heck, that's okay. That's still a good solid hour and a half of prospecting. But at the end of the day, if you're not meeting your monthly milestones, you got to put more time into the prospect. It helps to have that balance where, you know, an, an old broker of mine once, you know, she called it this way. She says, you got to work in your business and on your business, right? So working in your business is getting the deals closed, servicing the under contracts, meeting people. And then working on your business is 
How do I refine my systems and processes? How do I get more business? How do I automate this so that I free up more of my time? Right. So you need to be doing both. You need to be working in your business and on your business consistently in order to continue to grow and scale. Did that answer your question? I know it's super long winded. Yes, thank you. That's good. Do you happen to have a URL with uh, uh, that you could uh, post in there for the Tuesday trainings just so it's easier for people to see? Um, hold on, let me stop my screen share and grab my Google. Hold on one second. I do. I don't usually send it out because I, you know, there's so many spammers out in the world. Obviously, you guys aren't spammers, so I'll, I'll give it to you. Um, but I'm, I'm always just by default, I tell people to send me a note so I can make sure I know who we're signing up so we don't get any hiccups in the system. But anyone who wants to jump in, just click on that link. You're going to see a blue sign up link. Again, it's just going to be name, email, phone number, brokerage, and then hit go. Uh, and that's, so that'll be it. So too easy. We'll get you guys dialed in. What other questions do you guys have for me? I like your office. Now that I've unshared my screen, I can see everybody's beautiful faces. I like your setup. My office space, I'll actually here I'll, for, for a little chuckle since we got to downtime. My office space is currently in my mobile office. I'm in the back of my Ford Expedition <laughs> because I was, I was telling before we jumped on the Zoom, I'm in Florida right now with my sister who's also a real estate agent and I'm staying at her house because I'm in the middle of completely remodeling a lake house. So it's gutted, like there's nothing, there's no internet, I got nothing. I've been borrowing her office every day to do coaching calls and, and webinars. I've got like three different podcasts people wanted me to do this week. Last night, she up out of nowhere. She's like, we're moving closer to you. We just found a piece of property on the lake. in the house on the market tonight. So today I've got, you know, I was like, there's showings happening and there's chaos. And I'm like, I'm not trying to coordinate this training around your showings. I'm leaving. So I'm actually sitting in a parking lot under a cell tower, mobile hotspotting my phone, using the AC outlet in the back of my expedition to run my laptop. So <laughs> there's a will, there's a way, right? Nothing gets in the way of good change. That's a well, perfect could, office. Well, you could do like Jeff's doing, you know, tearing up his entire backyard to make a staycation or whatever he's doing in that backyard, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I am actually, videos. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited. So this new house has a detached, uh, it's attached to the house, but it, the access is only from the outside. It's a 233 square foot room that becomes my dedicated office. Nobody gets to, no noise. It's concrete block walls. I'm super excited about that because I, I haven't had a, you know, I usually just do my work on my laptop on my dining room table looking at the mountain view from Virginia. Now I'm going to be looking out the window at my lake doing my work on my laptop. So I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, what else, guys? Hey, I'm just going to say I totally watch if you're on TikTok. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have a TikTok channel that I literally started just because I was like, it can't be that hard. It's TikTok. It's the most viewed website anywhere. Like it's got more views than Google now. And, and I started just making some super videos to kind of advertise our coaching. But I'm like, this ain't me. Like I can't do, I can't cheese it up. It's just me in a Hawaiian shirt and with a bad background and poor lighting. And I'm not all glamped up, you know. <laughs> But yeah, if you guys want to follow, uh, if you're on TikTok or you're going to do TikTok, um, look up Christian Martuzo on TikTok or Instagram because that guy has got it figured out and you can replicate him all day long with that. I'll actually pull up my TikTok right now. Hopefully the sound, I'm going to turn my sound off for a second. Christian what? Martuzo? I'm not sure how to spell it, but Martuzo is it? Is that the guy who was saying did like 160,000 or something in 90 days? How do you spell his last name? How do you spell? I, so, sorry, I turned my volume down just for a second. That TikTok link is Christian Martuzo's TikTok link. For yeah. anyone who thinks they're going to do TikTok or Instagram, they want to get into short form video, 
follow that guy because he's got it he's got it down how, how do you spell his last name it's in the chat kathy yeah, i just I oh just okay sorry his, sorry his last ahead. name is more Tuzo, so it's m-o-r-e-t-u-z-z-o oh okay. christian with a c just like the standard spelling of christian okay. but that guy is a maniac on tiktok and instagram he closed one hundred twenty thousand dollars in 90 days but from TikTok video, all of the business came from his TikTok video. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Do you know how long he was in the business, Walt? Uh, he's a relatively new agent, actually, and the TikTok Instagram has kind of been his number one strategy. He's a younger guy, as you might imagine, so that demographic just works really well for him. And you know, he's cool with. He's dedicated a lot of time and energy. He's got, a, he's got a, gal, a gal who does all his photography and video videography with him. And I mean, he's just like a YouTube channel. He puts a lot of time and effort into running that channel. But it works for him because he's, he's, he's cracked the code. He's doing it really well. Well, I like what you said. People need to find what works with their personality, right? I mean, following somebody else just because they're successful doesn't mean you're going to be successful at it. And I think right. a lot of people make that mistake. No, absolutely. So the, the, my, my idea of prospecting for your personality type, it came from, you know, I used to teach people just how to cold call. And I, again, I hate the word cold call. I actually, I don't call it cold calling. I call it quality conversations. But what I learned was, even though I thought it was the easiest thing in the world to do, because relationships are what do this business, right? Conversations are what build those relationships. It was a no brainer for me. I was amazed at how many people were petrified of picking up the phone and calling a stranger they've never talked to. Like there are people that genuinely reach out when you tell them, well, just do some cold calling. And so it, it was so obvious that I actually adjusted my training. The first slide talks about the psychology of having the conversation and, and the fear versus the reality of how the call will likely go. Because I realized over time, so many people were afraid to do it. And so it's not for everybody, even though it's highly effective for me, it's not for everybody, right? TikTok is highly effective for some people. If you're not going to put in the time and effort to do it, it won't be highly effective for you, right? So just like a good YouTube channel, right? I, I have a YouTube channel. I'm not a YouTuber, but I have a YouTube channel. YouTube's not my jam. Like I don't dedicate the time and energy I need to do it properly. Never going to work for me, but I got a coach. We got a coach that does, they've done $1.2 million in a, in a year off of their YouTube channel. That's just stupid to me, but they do it right, right? That's so it's all about, <laughs> it's all about what will click with your personality, because if, if it, if it aligns with your personality, it's no, it's not a fight, right? You don't have to, well, I have to do this because I need business, right? You enjoy it. And when you enjoy what you do, that message conveys subconsciously to the other side of the conversation and you do more business that way because they feel like you're genuinely interested in what you're doing. Well, it is 1.59. So you let me know if we need to keep chatting or if you got anything else you got going on. Oh, um, yeah, we're good. We're good, Walt. Um, my biggest takeaway was um, setting goals that question whether or not you can actually achieve it. Um, I, I, at least for me, setting a goal and saying, yeah, I'll nail that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty easy to, to do. So that, that was a, a good takeaway. Got lots if, of notes if, on here. Nice. I, yeah. You're, if you set a soft, if you, if you set your goal as a softball, you'll hit it. You'll absolutely, you'll knock it out of the park. But, but what did you really gain if you set a goal so easy you can achieve it, right? Absolutely. And, and it, the, the long-term vision piece helps, right? And, and, and people, they're like, I'm, this is some kumbaya stuff. Close your eyes and vision what, what your life looks like in five years, right? I'm sitting on my pontoon boat in the back of my lake with my cell phone and a fishing pole because I've done so much business, I don't need to be doing business, right? If that's where I want to be in five years, well, damn, I need to set some real goals to get me there. And so that helps you make those goals a little bit more bold. And again, even if you miss them and you're still gonna have a rock star year because you made them big enough that the goals that you miss are still crushing it compared to most agents in the market. 
Love it. Well, anybody else have any questions? Uh, we'll probably let Walt go, get about his day. He committed an hour to us. Um, a lot of good value, Walt. You're very articulate in explaining the, the concepts that you were talking about. And I think a lot of people on the Zoom and here present will probably check out your Tuesday trainings as well. Cool. So thanks for offering that value. Absolutely, okay. more than that. Oh, we got a question in the room here, Walt. I was having a hard time with my Zoom. Is there a way this is going to be on replay? I missed the first part of the meeting. Uh, yeah, Jeff, you're recording this, I right? I actually recorded it. Yeah. Okay, oh. yeah, so you, you'll get a replay from Jeff. Yeah, cool. yeah, that's awesome. All right. Thank you. Hey, you guys that are on Zoom, uh, again, Walt, thank you so much. Oh, we're over here, but... My uh, <laughs>